this researcher in France, he decided to live uh, in a cave with several other researchers. Sounds like a graduate study of some sort. <laughs> yeah. And they lived in a cave with um, no uh, clocks or time of any type. So it's a casino. You're talking about a casino? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what it is. They basically went to a, like a small little place in Las Vegas, and they just bet their lives away. No, it was like um, they wanted to see what how humans react to having like no sense of time, and so like they basically had to create their own time. Is this your way to tell me that uh, you want to have that same format for the podcast? Like, just totally lose all sense of time, not have a an, an intro one minute in. Uh, yeah, uh, no, yeah. Do categories at the beginning. Yeah, we just just see what happens. You know, just let let time take over us and or not have so, so like because the idea is that like you know humans are really run by the clock right if you can get a cave and do some sound dampening that'd make for a good podcast no doubt let's get started matt thank you for coming over never ending becoming that, that was fucking killer good great it's getting good at it you know i gotta take a couple of practice shots first Let's go right into some categories. You just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. I'm saying categories. These are concepts. These are nouns. These are people. I can't wait. These are associations. Now, let's specify the rules. One word, or can I have, like, a phrase? I've learned not to be too dogmatic about some of these things. I don't know everything. Okay. So just do whatever you want. You can talk for three seconds, four seconds. I'll be first one, Lily of the Valley. Isn't that oh uh, the uh, Breaking <laughs> Bad? Breaking what? Bad, right? Isn't that Breaking Bad? Excellent. It is. It is from Breaking Bad. He do, he does use it. Uh, a Mr. Po- a Mr. Heisenberg, I believe. Ironically, sorry. Side note: I thought you would choose Brian Cranston, so I had a, a ready for if you said the name Brian Cranston, which was coward, because I love the way he delivers coward in that show. So okay, ironically, that's it. That's we it. were on the same. Lily of the Valley. Coward. Coward. Second one, I have chewing gum. See now this isn't fair because I feel like be the, these are it's like these are like quotes where I should know that. Chandler Bing from Friends. Does he like gum or? Or he has gum because he's in a bank with a, a beautiful model, right? And he and she she has like bad breath. I can't remember if she has bad breath, but he goes, "I have chewing gum," and then he's like, "I have chewing gum." Ironically, he's in the news right now for some not so great stuff, but we'll get to that maybe. Third one, Jason Sudeikis. Um, uh, Olivia Wilde. I feel so bad for him. They broke up recently. And okay, she started dating Harry Styles, and so Olivia Wilde would be my. I did not know they were together, but pretty rough when your ex goes to Harry Styles, Star- right? That's, that's and they like easy. break up and right right away. <laughs> Anytime an ex goes to a musician, it's like forgetting. Oh, like a younger things. musician and like one of the most biggest sex symbols of our time, and you know, yeah. energy. You doing the every t- every time you think you s- smack your lips? <laughs> I should stop. I was it. editing my podcast yesterday, trying to take all the lip smacks. So <laughs> you drive me fucking and, nuts. And I was doing it to recollect, to catch my breath. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's like yeah. a pause or like a comma, like. <gasps> okay, me. so energy, Matt. Um, it can neither be created nor destroyed, right? Yeah, that's true. Einstein. Digestible. Hopefully, this podcast. Damn right, man. Damn right. Using the term irregardless. <laughs> I try to do it as not as often as I can. Not very frequently. Inf- is infrequently? Ir- is irregular as is you can? <laughs> irregular and infrequently. <laughs> yeah, that's a commonly misused, right? Irregardless. Regardless, because it's regardless. Irregardless. We're making it hard on ourselves. Irregardless is more letters, more time. Yeah, regardless. It's a problem. There's yeah. another one like that. Regardless of how you say it, people mm. are going to understand what you're trying to say, basically. Irregardless. We're not going to be doing these categories forever. Just got a few more I here. I kind of love it, though. It's fun. Yeah, no, it's good. It's been working out. And then I, I did think of some things we could talk about, possibly. It's probably bleeding through the card. You can see it here. Next one we have. just says dongs. Like, I just see dongs like the. Uh, sorry. I have songs. No, it's oh. not. It's not. <laughs> Joy. To the world. Joy to joy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, see that? I didn't, I didn't no, even think knew. about myself joy. You knew. To the world. You want joy to the world, yeah. You'd be pretty funny, actually, like a sociopath test. You say joy. They say to me. Yeah. <laughs> joy to the me, to, to the I. Leather straps. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Like something they, weird. They just leather. Yeah. Then it's just you found their, their safe word or something. <laughs> Canopy. I thought immediately like jungle. You know don't don't I mean? beat yourself up for these, man. You, jungle. You're, you're smacking. There's a... Uh, Be proud of that jungle canopy. 
Well, there's two things. I'm reading a book, and it's a sci-fi book, and there's a city, and it's got a canopy, and never mind. I'm not gonna go. Into, but yes, you know, I jungle. A canopy. Uh, was it like some sort of unobtainium type fake? No, alloy? the idea is like the city has grown, and like the poor people live at the bottom, and there's like an upper. You know, like the Jetsons, how they lived kind of above people. They live in like the canopy. The rich people lived in like the canopy, where there's like trellises from like place to place, so they don't have to go down into the bottom with like the seems like the, the Jetsons were in the stratosphere oh yeah yeah like right international space station type level well, almost Elon-esque I'm sure he chills up there on occasion right <laughs> no he, he he I feel like it was like above the cloud right because the idea is like you know the, the atmosphere is totally polluted below from nuclear waste and that's how they have forced to live above or just uh that I don't the know theory? shit coming out of billionaires RVs and yachts and whatnot we have somebody p- said it Okay, this is an interesting thought. One I never more. thought it. That's got one more thought we, on this one. We should be scared at how many of these super wealthy rich billionaires are trying to get off planet. That should show us how scarce the resources are on this planet if all of these billionaires are trying their damnedest to get off of the planet. Trying to get out of their marriages, and I was off, like, off this off planet. planet, right. It's like, whoa, I didn't think about that. Why do you know they still so, so want to go to Mars? Cause Ten bucks says the whole problem with all this billionaire in space thing. It's just Richard Branson had a mushroom trip once and has been describing this to Elon and Bezos for years now, getting them jealous as fuck. It's the biggest dick swing like, contest of all oh, time. Oh, yeah, I, I took a trip to Xenu, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. You know, it's told some crazy story. That has just made them totally obsessed about chasing his dragon, basically. I'm going to need that accent way more than you give it. So I've been working on my accents. Last time I did a David Lynch. <laughs> yeah. Horrifying yeah. imagery. You know, uh, that Kyle MacLachlan, I love him. <laughs> it's hard not to go high. We got a few more here. Sure. Two more specifically. We got a couple more. Ninth one being Tito Puente. Isn't he the drummer? And that's a Simpsons reference. He's in The Simpsons. He is a drummer. And he's of course, a, I'm bringing sorry. up a fellow drummer. I was like, it's that's a Simpsons reference. Tito Puente and Lisa Simpson. Sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm ruining this game because I'm not giving you quotes. I'm trying to figure out where his brain found these things. You know, I'm like, I know where he found that one. Good source material. No, I was a drummer. Yeah, you he's know? a drummer. You're yeah. telling me I wasn't smacking timbales in high school. Da, da, da. Tito Puente. Last one, then we can put this put this chapter behind us and, and make it so that other parts can be digestible. We're going to go with the word conversational. Spanish, like learning a language, like conversational Spanish. I want to know conversational Chinese. I like that because maybe you're only really being conversational when you only know a few words. Yeah. When you're only floating near the surface, when you're at the grocery store, you're at the bank making small talk, and you're you're digging deep. Maybe you should call it when you're when you're sitting for a podcast. Not just donde esta biblioteca, but you know, deeper questions. You know, like what? Yeah. How is your family? Donde esta you should have still used, bi- you should have still used biblioteca. It would have been funnier. <laughs> yeah. right? I feel like it would have had something going for it. <laughs> How are you doing today? Generally. What's up, man? I'm fine. A little chilly. Nice. Enjoying this nice tea. I hope you like the shawls. I got to say, they f- they photograph well. So. I am uh, in uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's newest production of Joseph <laughs> and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> it, it looks great because you have some yellow on your headphone. You got some yellow on your mic stand. So I'm uh, peacocking it, as they say. It's hard to, to match your AV equipment with your, your on-stage presence, but you're, you're doing a good job. I try. Cheers. We're getting there. Yeah, cheers. Surprisingly cold. We've taken a step uh, backwards here, but we're moving forward. Like I mentioned earlier, 48th episode of Can't the show. Can't fucking stomp us. Trying to think more specifically about what we want to talk about. I mentioned I didn't want to be too dogmatic. Did you have some uh, ideas? I do. Oh, okay. Uh, but just quickly about the dogmatic thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In looking back at some older episodes... It's been a long time that we've had this going now. It's been over a year in terms of the, the calendar time, right? Year He's kicking me off the show right now. <laughs> just, yeah, just, <laughs> it's such like a break. We've had some Matthew good times coming, together. Matthew, coming in, have a seat. <laughs> I have something I need to tell you. You know, we've had some good times, but, you know, just, you know, it's, things are shifting. In some ways, I feel like I used to be too dogmatic about not preparing for the show. Yeah, like, no. I, like, I was not allowed to prepare for the show because it would be inauthentic in a sense. And there's something that I love so much about podcasts that you don't get in other forms of media everything seems so edited and cut and dry and life is often messy and colors outside of the lines and and i wanted that to be the show yep but i i I still think you can set intentions absolutely absolutely right uh i think as the time goes on there's things that i i'd want to talk about that you know like i i you know because at the beginning it was like i was like oh just play it fast and loose because you know there's things that happen during the week or whatever that i'd remember to talk about you know but two 
you know, when there was a lot of time between everything, it was harder because, you know, we'd go a couple of weeks, you know what I mean? Or, or like, you know, maybe two weeks, three weeks or a couple months. So it's not like you could write things down. Now we're doing week to week. It's, I think it pays to be more topical. It pays, you know, that way we're, we keep things moving forward and there's things, you know, we don't like go topical. back and rehash. So Part much. of it is wanting to be topical, not just being real, but being like fresh. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I don't know, a lot of procrastinators use that excuse, right? In, in some way. What's that? Just that you want to do something at the very last minute to make sure it's the most oh, accurate yeah. oh, yeah. reflection of the yeah. current zeitgeist yeah. or whatever you're... I think there's a difference between, like, um, like a little preparation and, uh, you know, like, just fucking winging it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like, I think there was times where we just straight up winged it. And then there was times where I myself would be like, okay, this is a good thing to talk about. Let me just try to... Even if I didn't write it down, I would organize my thinking and, and try to maybe, like... But then, too, like, this is a very natural thing, so we would we would veer off you know you veer off and you go right. into certain places you know that's what i want to make sure we keep is like if we go on a tangent it's not like no 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 back to exactly make it flow exactly i think there's something to be said about having a few bullet points you want to hit a few touch points you can keep circling back to otherwise you you can get way too far and yeah. you can ne you never get back maybe you never go deep enough on those things that matter the most to begin with. And it keeps the conversation going. Like, it's like we're, we're having a, per a perpetual one. You know what I mean? Like, lately, we've been talking about, you know, the muskrat, Elon Musk. <laughs> That's his new nickname. I'm giving it to him just now. You heard it here first, folks. Um, you know, like, we've been talking about him a lot, but now it's like he's become like a, a topic of the of the conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't want to, like, rehash stuff. I want to, like, keep moving forward with that stuff about him. So if I think about something. Like, right, I, got, I have uh, on this page, I had Starlink. I have Starlink. Let's. You want to hit that first? Well, I mean, I just it was just for example. I just Came saw up. it for the first time. You brought it up. I saw it for the first time, like what <laughs> it looks like in space. When you, it's funny when you talk about seeing things from space. A lot of times you're looking at a photo of satellite imagery, or you were looking at someone's like twelve thousand dollar DSLR. Like, what was the photo or media that you took in it saying was, this is space? Somebody. It was somebody who was at so. Uh, TikTok selfie video where they're like turning and moving it the was camera. A, it constantly. was a cell phone video, but I think um, the 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 deal was that it was at the launch, like early launch stage of it. So now there's technology where they're not as bright, but because it was they were launching and they were about to go into their orbit, you just saw like a trail of lights, and so it was very interesting because you know not to say the the wrong word here, but many people were like, oh, it's UFOs, right? Because of how weird. And just a straight line of like straight line of stars, which nobody had ever seen. And if you didn't know what Starlink was, people were commenting how they were they thought like the aliens had finally came. Because so you're telling me this story ended up getting resolved by them just turning the lights down? Yeah, I guess like they made it less bright. Newer technology that they've Im implemented called that they were dimmer, able to called a dimmer yeah. switch. <laughs> they just have a guy on the side of these satellites, and they go. <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting seeing it like go up and seeing like the trail of lights, you know, go on, and I. Because, you know, I, I was pretty, I'm pretty, I don't want to say anti-Starlink, but. Um. Matt's pro-Starfleet anti-Starlink. Let's not get too carried away with that, but back to the preparing. Yeah, so I prepared that little thing. Just curious, you know, thought about it because we've been talking about Elon Musk and then I saw the video. So I was like, oh, I'm going to write this down. This would be a good topic to continue the conversation about Elon, right? You know. I also I annotated my last video and like put like timestamps. Oh, I know I've seen was. people do that on videos. I'm not I sure how like I feel. That. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think it's very useful when you're looking for a specific thing. Yeah, we we talked about that before too. But how about the theory that if you plan, like if we say we're going to talk about these three things and you know you have to circle back to them, is it possible that that allows you to get freer? And that you always know where home is. Oh, I didn't even. I and didn't so you can get a little wide. In the same way, if you keep a schedule where like I know I pay my bills on Sunday. And then I do this on Monday. When you're doing that thing on Monday, you're not thinking about the bills because you're like, it's not Sunday. It's not I don't Monday. have to worry about it's that shit. It's not fucking Sunday. <laughs> and yeah. in a way, when we don't prepare and we have to go off the cuff talking about anything that we're mentally dragged down by the type of pressure to feel like we have to talk about everything. I don't know, man. I can <laughs> I'm trying to blow your mind here a little bit. Yeah, see, but like... So for me, I like talking about everything. My mind is like ADD And central. is your mind not exhausted from the modern age that we live in? That's what I'm kind of pointing out. Sometimes, like, Jesus, yeah. we have Sometimes. to put so much on the RAM that we're not maybe putting the full processing power towards those two or three things that matter the most. Uh, I was just talking about that. Uh, just your, your brain, the way your brain focuses on things and, and, it, and it 
doesn't always focus on the right things because there's Matt's so much talking about my brain like specifically no no no, no. i'm talking about yeah. my brain. external stimuli like you said well, you don't so focus ex- on the right things you know you know no it's it's, it's it's external stimuli i have so much external stimuli there's right. so much stuff going on well how about this theory if we don't choose what we're going to talk about then i don't know whatever media players instagram ads youtube influence this or that whoever had the loudest voice that week they're the ones choosing what we talk about media brainwash oh, how man. about that <laughs> Earlier you said how in sync we are, and I I was listening to NPR here, uh, like it, doing the dishes before it came, and I was thinking about bringing up like, oh, that's a good thing to talk about. And I was like, man, no, because that's what NPR is talking about. That's not what I specifically want to talk yeah, about. That's right. It's interesting that like they're talking about it, but like I don't need to rehash exactly what they're doing. But I, in you just voiced what I was thinking. Like, are they manipulating me into like perpetuating their? Not that they're, you know, blah, blah, but yeah. I have a show idea called Rehash. Which is basically just people watching an entire NPR episode. I don't know, maybe what's an what's a favorite NPR program from you? There's uh, we'll see um, uh, what's the one I always listen to every day? Fresh Air. It's, yeah, fr- Fresh Air is good. Terry Gross. Yeah, um, All Things Considered is the one that I used. All Things to. Considered. So they have to listen to one episode of All Things Considered on rehash. Yeah. They have to smoke a ton of hash, <laughs> and then they have to like try to do a total parody. <laughs> yeah. No, no, a total replication of what they just talked so, about on NPR. Very similar to Drunk History, but with yeah, hash. Yeah, I'm just trying to steal that idea. <laughs> yeah. True. I'm not full of... There's only so many good ideas, number one. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The best artists steal. Yeah, that's we a also, great idea. I think people are talking about buying cannabis stocks, whatever, getting on the ground floor of that. We need to take cannabis culture. Oh, yeah. That's the thing that's most yeah. vulnerable, right? But you talked about... Let's Maybe we can go back to Starling for a second. Sure. If you want. Facebook is also going after them. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like Zuckerberg versus Elon. Yeah. Well, um, in a lot of parts of the world, Facebook is the internet, right? Yeah. And so, like, the idea that like he could put up a Starlink and give everybody free internet that is not, you know, through Facebook. You know what I mean? Mark Zuckerberg's like, you're taking a piece of my pie, bro. Who would you rather have your finger on the internet button, so to speak? Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk? Just personality-wise, I'd rather shoot myself in the fucking face. No, I, I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to choose. Fifty years. Yeah, for you. yeah, I know. No, I don't want to choose between. I don't want to have to choose between those two people. Um, I don't. I mean, if I have to choose between those two people, you've been asked on a podcast. Um, I guess I'd go. I guess I'd go Zuck. You, I don't know. That's all right. Go with the gut. He's Do just feel done like it you're, for you, so long. I feel like he's and they're they're at least. Tr- I don't know, man. Well, I mean, Elon's on his third wife. Uh, Zuckerberg's on his first company. So. Yeah, right, right. And, and like, Elon's also on his fifth company or whatever it is. So. I just feel There's like... There's something to be said about someone who has skin in the game, sort of, and is and is consistent. You know, he's... he's Not he's, that I'm trying to be a, a Zuck stan here. No, but you I know, actually that's don't, part you know, of it. Yeah, don't yeah. feel that positive. No, no, no. But, but those considerations are kind of interesting. Who would you choose? I, I, My gut says Zuck. Yeah. I, I really don't like the way Elon's been acting. The... the I think I'm, you got to consider it to be some sort of pump and dump with his his coin activity, yeah, his Doge sure. and Bitcoin. He, you know, you sent me some like info on Tesla's like money making. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I thought that was super interesting. You know, they artificially, not artificially, but one of the reasons they had profitability was due to the fact that they were selling Bitcoin. He yeah. pump and dumped Bitcoin. When that was, he was the one getting it to go up in the first place. It's like usually, what, what usually the, when a billionaire gets you in on some sort of pyramid scheme. Or usually when someone gets you in on a pyramid scheme, they're not a billionaire. You know what I mean? Like, it's someone who is, like, struggling with money. Bernie Madoff. Um, yeah, no. Uh, that was, I mean, he was could. a billionaire, and he could... He could and we I'm, do need a new Madoff. All right, Matt, you're trying to say Elon Musk, you think, is the new Bernie Madoff. I think he's... Uh, he knows how to... <laughs> he uses his resources to make him give him more money. And if that resource is his social media, he uses that resource. Yeah, well... Uh, he does not have a marketing uh, department for a reason. Yeah. You know, neither did, did Trump, right? Basically, so this yeah. is just a, a classic playbook at this point. Yeah, we don't have to stay on Starlink forever. No, you, no, no, Elon, no. What have you? Yeah, I mean, but he's just he's just a natural topic of conversation right now. But yes, that it, that infographic I showed you, it was the things that made them profitable was uh, government contracts and the money that he put into um, Bitcoin. Like, and you could literally see the money for Bitcoin is almost their entire profitability, right? Yeah, I hate to have this totally turn into a Tesla bear podcast. But of course, yes, tax credits are, are the huge. only reason they've made any yeah. money, gotten accepted into the S&P 500. Absolutely. And those are supposed to to expire. Basically, we're as taxpayers subsidizing Tesla. the wealth of Elon, who yes. now resents us so much he's moving to a different planet. Yeah. All right. Do you want to move on to one of our sure, what do you got? Yeah, categories? You, you, you give me your categories. I'm going to just... Do you, do you feel like you want to start 
with like an easier one or yeah, I'm just going to go from the top here. You, I want to talk about quotes. Do okay. a couple quotes. Try to get some, you know, refined, enriched knowledge. How do you feel about quotes in general? I have three quotes I want to talk about. Oh man, but you're then, so good at this. Uh, quotes. Um, like I love quotes. I love quotes and I love cliches. I love when ideas are th- synthesized into like pure, simple, like digestible, yeah. um, you know, snippets and where you can think about a good quote and you're just like, ah, oh, that hit me. And you're like, good, that sticks with me. So I love cliches and I love quotes. It's just quick ways of uh, passing information. Excellent that you use digestible. I saw I went back to that. Word of the day calendar that has become the, the beginning category section. I love quotes too. I mean, we need heuristics to, to back up on. That's a template, by the way, a mental template for anyone struggling with the word heuristic. I'm going to start overly explaining words, vocabulary. So I'm gonna Especially pump, when you do those $5 words, you got to pump up and yeah. Well, I don't want to, you know, I, in the same way, the same reason I love quotes, uh-huh. I love using words like heuristic. Yeah. It, it feels like a punchline or something. It seems like an opportunity to like insert a bit into a conversation, like make it's pattern, pattern recognition in a way, like, like fitting some sort of expression in or some sort of quote someone said. Do you, is are you, are you talking about like euphemisms or, um, you know, what it, like fr- phrases, sayings? That are, yeah, that's like cliches. Yeah, cliches. You know, like but quotes, like from people. How about from people? Yeah, but I, I but I think there's a lot of good quotes from people that are good at distilling information or having very smart, you know, phrases. Absolutely. You know, you life know. life can be complicated. Life can be simple. Yeah, I I'm terrible with quotes though. Like, don't ask me to quote anybody. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I'm terrible with quotes unless it's stupid pop culture quotes, and then it's like barest of margins to be honest i didn't write the full quotes out on this piece of paper so part of me in preparing for this was like oh fuck i have to like remember three quotes that's kind of ridiculous it's i i'm not good at that like i've always envied people side note like that could just like recite poetry you know you go back and you look at like guys in history and like a lot of the presidents they'd have their pocketbooks of poetry like john adams and he'd recite and he knew chaucer and all this shit I, f- no way i can't fucking recite i can't do that some people are still really good at that i'd love to i'd love to keep becoming more like that just keep putting like ammunition in the tank more presidential possibly (laughs) first quote's gonna be the faintest ink is better than the strongest memory have you heard that one no i don't think i have but you don't have to say anything even we can move on to the next one i just want to say no i I, if you have a response i like it i I like it (laughs) I like it a lot. Memories are memories are fleeting. Memories you rewrite memories, you know. And but the faint. It- sorry. No. 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 <laughs> Second one, be the type of person you want to meet. This isn't even a quote. This is more of a cliche. Be the change you want to see in the world. Is that the same? It's. I think it's. It's along the same lines, right? Be. I don't. I don't think it's the same because one, you, you have to be changing or instituting change mm. and in one it, it more implies be the type of person you want to meet it implies more of a plateau you could reach or at least a, a level mm, to sure. obtain sure maybe not no sure i'll give it to you i'll give it to you i didn't want to at first but then i thought about it. i was like no he's kind of right he's kind of right <laughs> being, well be being the change the person you want to see in the world you're implying that the like something needs to change here yeah uh, you don't think it does you don't think what you think the world is perfect as it is bud just need to be more good. Don't straw man me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't straw man me. No, of course I think. Do you like that. my rage and indignancy that was coming through? <laughs> what? What? You, know, you think the world's a fine place? What? <laughs> let's let's pull a quote of me making it sound like I think the world <laughs> doesn't need to change. Speaking of quotes, uh, let's, let's let's blow through the quotes so we can move on. And then, I kind of like. It. Okay, well, I'm just I'm paranoid. At least I'm gonna forget this quote, so we have to make sure we get. <laughs> I don't even know there's a direct. There's something like this. Okay, let's hear it. Next time you're in traffic, remember. You are traffic. I love that the kids scream in the background too. And it kind of gives mm-hmm. a feel like you're actually driving by outside. <laughs> and you, you just murdered like a be- kid with your fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> you are traffic. You, 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 you. I just thought about trafficking people and I, then being the traffic and like, you know. I, I just need this one. Because I do get some road rage sometimes. We've talked about that. I think road. that's so funny. Like, because <laughs> like if I mean like off camera, James is like one of the calmest dudes, right? You don't, you don't. Not always. Okay. Come on. Okay, fine. But I think you're pretty calm. You, you keep it pretty together. I. But just like imagining you in the car, like your safe zone, where you're just like, come on, you know. There's something about it. Yeah. There's something about it. It's the, it's the thing how it like just forcibly works you up, makes you kind of 
be before there was anonymous like internet people you were anonymous in your car so you could be as rageful in your car to people because it's almost anonymous you're just in a metal box and you know you're just a vague person so you could giving everybody the finger and whatnot you know I need to remind myself that I am traffic too. It's there's a sort of uh, separation and arrogance that's that's having to occur when you're telling yourself that like, oh, what are all these cars on the road? It's like, well, you're there. You know, you're on the road. You're doing it at the same time as they are. And granted, I have a 2004 Chevy Tracker, so I take up very little real estate on the road. Uh, <laughs> comically little, comically small amount I like of real that. estate. But still, the uh, fact remains the same. Thank God. Okay, I got the quotes. Got through the quotes. That's like that's concerning those, uh, a little you know, bit. I- I don't. I don't think you should. Uh, we should do that more. We should do more quotes. I'll come up with. Some I love quotes. them. I love them. I love quotes. Too. Do or do not. There is no try. What ro- <laughs> What role do quotes play in your life, though? Are you like, I don't know. Are you putting them up? Are you Are you rewriting them? Are you? Scro- I'm not a bull- I'm not a bulletin board guy. Do you keep them on your Instagram? Do you find ways to kind of just instill them day to day? Ah, uh, no. I don't do anything like that. I like them. You just I'll wait till you're on a podcast. And some guy just, brings them up, and then and we just talk about them. Yeah, quote. You know, it's like. I think if I had like a book, you know, like if I was ever like a writer and I had a, like I write down quotes, you know, but I don't know if I'd do famous people. I'd want to do people around me. There was a time when I was first when me and Randy started dating that I think I had like a bunch of her quotes because she just she would make me laugh because she just said the driest things. That's very sweet. And like she would just and I had it like a like a place where I had a bunch of things she'd say and they're all very inappropriate that I would not want the mother of my child to say, but they used to make me laugh so much, you know? The scripture of Randy, though. Yeah, oh yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I had a little thing, and I'd just be like, that's going in the book. I don't even know, I just would write it down. I don't even know where that went. That's it was beautiful. That's really It was really on a computer somewhere, though. yeah. It was on a computer somewhere. I like yeah, that. I like more per- more personal quotes, you know? Do you, uh, do you, have you ever written down, like, phrasings that loved ones happen to use a lot? Like, um, good reminders about their, their essence or their personality? Uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of in a way. Yeah, there's there's some journaling I do, and I'd write down what people say. Like that sticks with me. You know what I mean? I do. I try to do that, and uh, I guess I do. I, it's funny because I never thought about it, but I guess I do. Like people will say things that I like, and I'll write them down. I got a little journal. You know, it's unconscious though. It's not like I'm, you know. I, yeah, it it can be. Like are you, talk, are you talking about remembering the things they say. It's unconscious. Yeah, because I forget so much. I forget. exactly. That's what I'm tra- writing it down. Well, the, fa- the faintest thing is better than the strongest memory. Absolutely. No, that's what I, I would agree with that quote. I agree with that quote. I heard I, that on Mad Men, by the way. Really? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I wish I would have pulled that one out. I love I, Mad Men. I think it's Eastern. It might be a Chinese yeah. proverb or something. Uh, that book about the canopy, that sci fi book, the guy, one of the main characters, he writes everything down, pen and paper, because uh, people can mess things digitally. But me writing things down on this paper, you know, I've written it down the paper. So the worst they can do is destroy it. They can't, like, fuck it up because it's my handwriting that, and I was like wow that's really good it feels very close to the reason I like to use ha- my handwriting for the videos yeah like it's yours a, it can't an be imprint, duplicated an honest imprint type thing it's yeah. authentic again back to the authentic it's immediate the immediacy and the authenticity of something doing something like right then and there and unique certainly a desperation for it yeah man there's so much cookie cutter everything in this in, uh, like, there's so much you know uh, I'm homogenization here there's a big word for you like everything's <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's all, I don't know. Things make same. Yeah, things make same. Things make same. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hit one of yours? I feel like I'm... I'm no, no, I kind of like... I hit you with the category. I felt so bad. I'm, not inter- I'm not trying to here to just interview you, you know? No, it no, no. Have I like, I like, you know, I like talking. I like being the interviewee. No, I just said, I kind of want to just go down the list. No, I don't want to go down the list. They're all stupid. Um, oh, that's a good one. Did you see Trump's clone? He's He's got his own Twitter that he made. I don't know if you saw oh, that Oh, is recently. this the from the desk of Donald Trump? Yes, thing? he's like, because he got kicked off of Facebook. Thank you, Zuck. See, I like Zuck. He kicked him off. He did with You know what I mean? Yeah. So, f- you know what? Oh, uh, you know, come on. The uh, the totally fair group that he put together kicked him off or whatever it was. The oversight <laughs> right. committee right. Uh, of the right. five <laughs> sycophants that he chose. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, in, in, in retaliation, Trump has now has from the desk of Donald J. Trump, which is like, basically like it's a Twitter page for himself. You know, nobody else can use it, but it's just for him. Um, which I just think is, is, I don't even know. It's, it's just so par for the course. <laughs> you know what I it's, mean? Maybe we don't even know how to think about him anymore. I can't, he's, I can't. he's fallen out of public discourse. It's like, and that's actually, that could be the w- worst death that he could suffer, right? That we don't even have an opinion on his ass anymore. See, my thing is though, is I think it's almost worse that we're not talking about him anymore mm. because he isn't going away. And I think if you're looking at what's happening with, uh, Liz Cheney right now, and how the mittens romney yeah yeah mittens man you know they are they're um 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're standing being behind ostracized. Yeah, due they're being to ostr- their they're 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 solidifying allegiance they're, to the reason of the party, not like the power dynamics of the party. Right? Yeah, they're old school. They're like, no, this is not. We we're not a per- cult of personality. Whereas exactly. all of these people are like, no, we are. No, no, we can do that. We are, and um, it's just kind of sc- scary because I feel like we're all we have this false sense of security that Biden won and that now everything's better and that Trump is just going to disappear when in actuality I feel like we're not shining the light on it that we need to you know I think the the lights shining you know Biden just had his hundred first hundred days which is also on the list and you know how good you know people are like he's his approval rating hasn't gone anywhere it's the same it is like the most consistent approval rating of anybody in the last you know whatever and not you know since i think since they started doing like the 100 days thing his approval rating is at like 54% and it's like has not moved you know i expected such complacency if we would have nominated Dwayne the Rock Johnson but with Joe Biden he thought that anti establishment shit would have stuck around a little bit more right yeah yeah although what the hell is the vaccine reluctance phenomenon if not maybe some sort of also under possible. the surface resentment about trump in some way could that uh, be, could that be possible i think it is lingering of, i think it is lingering like um a lot of the people he pushed to the teat of fringe media stayed there and stayed yeah. in their radical echo chambers on facebook and all in all these micro groups i mean i, I hate to always just put everyone in one big group because obviously there's like 15 different factions sort of coming together a lot of times in these in these big big situations yeah and i think though what it's like the splintering of like modern conservatives into a deeper like there are little pockets now but i think it's it's still the same umbrella they just have their own little facets so oan and newsmax and fox news they're giving you the same thing it's just varying perspectives of the same notes do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, even though it's like, I, it seems like I'm grouping them together and they're separate, they are separate, but there's still this, like, umbrella of, like, of, of like, Trumpism. It's not even conservatism anymore. It's Trumpism. It's, and I think you're seeing the vaccine, the, va- the silver relaxance of the vaccine, is poison left over from Trump. It's like, it's like, you know, we got the snake bite and the snake bite is still lingering. This idea that, like, if you're a moron and you're the loudest moron in the room, your opinion is better than anybody else's because you're the loudest moron in the room, you know? It certainly seems that one of the elements of market share could be turning up the dial on rage, turning up the dial on ignorance. Fuck yeah, dude. And it's okay to be ignorant. The idea that your ignorance is a, is equal to somebody's intelligence because you're louder about it. It's a counterculture element as it relates to the elites and how people have resentment towards the people in positions For of sure. power and control. Well, I'm seeing a lot of backlash too. It's like, uh, there's this, oh man, this viral thing of this guy holding up a sign saying like, uh, Oh man, it it did. It fucking trig- it triggered me. It's like you um it was something along the lines of like you mask your kids because you want to pretend to be a hero. You should have written this down, dude. And you're just a flabby, flabby yeah. chested like weakling, blah 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 blah. Like just like basically like if you wear, have your kids wear masks, it's cuz you're a little bitch. You know what I mean? Right. This like whole sentiment of like wanting to protect your family and listening to people and experts that are smarter than you. Well, you're just a sheep. You're just, you know, you're getting a vaccine, it's going to pollute you and you're going to get sick. You know, I have a family member who got the vaccine and they ended up getting a sinus infection completely unrelated like the next day. Right. But of course it became, oh, the virus got or the vaccine got me sick. You know, the vaccine got I'm sick because of the vaccine. And it's like there's nothing you can tell that person to like dissuade them from the fact. And then it's like perpetuates a lot of their thinking process because they're, they're sharing it to all these other people who believe that the vaccine is not working and all this stuff. So then it just perpetuates it. We're constantly putting things in packages for ourselves just to make sense of it all. Yeah. Make it digestible, of course. Okay. Digestible, again, the but external stimuli, you got to make it digestible for yourself. The problem is when you associate things erroneously. Mm. You know, when you get kicked in the ass and then you get a check in the mail, all of a sudden... Like damn, I'm I'm into pain now. I don't know. This is the only way I can associate. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Pavlov response, right, or something like that. Not maybe not Pavlov response, but like you know, like you you start to train yourself to like expect yeah. things, and then it, it happens, and it's like you know, I knew I was gonna get sick. The way people have been kept, kept like kind of fat and happy with stimulus checks and b- benefits to sit at home, like in 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 a way, like a lot of people might be associating Corona with like gluttony <laughs> or like affluence. People mm. who got richer, like. What if they're making that association where Side obviously note. yields were down, things yeah. were not being produced at, at as high of a level, whatever, 
but what if people were making more money? It's a totally weird association. So the unemployment numbers came out and they're down. And one of the reasons people said they're down about is the monthly for April. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Right? yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, the monthly numbers for April were down like six percent, something like that. I don't want to say the percent because I don't actually remember. But one of the reasons somebody was saying is because the unemployment benefits are currently better than a minimum wage in a lot of places that people are just not doing getting jobs because they'd rather have be on the government dole because that's paying more than minimum wage, which if you think about it, like I like it how it's like the way it's framed. It's like, well, we need to lower the unemployment benefits so we can go back to get these workers back to slave wages. You know what I mean? It's not like, wow, that's pretty fucked up that like people aren't paying a living wage. So why would people want to go back to these jobs? You know, the way it's framed is just totally fucked. But like it, it's just interesting right it's just interesting no it is a, a weird time in history that these kind of incentives could even be at play that our society is so wealthy that it can create i don't know if we should even say create this wealth or if it's just willing to cr- willing to create it in, in, in the form of you know inflated uh number of bills out there money in circulation yeah the, it's the money supply is it yeah right? Is it inflation? It's like are we just inflating all this stuff? You well, know? I you know I, I kind of was jumped you know putting the cart before the horse there. I, I should have said that the money supply had greatly increased. That right. there's been a, a large increase of the money in circulation. Right. And I think a lot of the the what was it Biden saying is like we haven't invested in us in like forever. So these trillions of dollars that they're throwing around is like we've done nothing for us to help programs and all this stuff. So it's like. I feel like he's taking wealth that we should have been like, or that should have been directed at us or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just think, um, like you said, we are, we are the, we are more wealthy than anybody has ever been ever. And the idea that we can't do like simple things, you know, just like simple things that like some of the rest of the world does, you know, you mentioned dull, dull out. That's, I think dull is what they call the UBI basically in Ireland. Oh, is it really you know? on the dull? dull? You're on the dull. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, you know, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if it's UBI in Ireland. I don't know how to describe that. Yeah. Maybe it's just welfare. social security, welfare, welfare type. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just have, there's just so much wealth floating around and there's the, the, the people that are rich are just so filthy rich. And the idea that like we could improve so many people's lives and we could improve so many things. And like, I think that there's just this, I don't know. I'm kind of going off on a tangent. I feel like, let me, let me get my, my list back. It could be worse. It, it'd be like more insulting if somehow, I don't know, Warren Buffett or um, Elon had some sort of like game show where they just put people in like one of those money machines, one of those like phone booths that they just spit money around. You remember movie Matilda? Yeah. And it has that one scene where the, the family's all sitting around like consumers and just eating the TV dinners. <laughs> and they're all like laughing at the guy and he's like, get sticky with Icky. And he's got all the sticky on him and he's trying to. St- but what, I, what I'm saying is like some, they, you know, Bezos got ahead of the taxation issue by starting a TV show to then change public opinion about whether money should be taken away from him. Right. Being like, oh, come on. He has that great show where it's a hundred dollar bills floating around in this, uh, you know, old okay. phone booth. Well, what do you think? Yeah. Again. Okay. Fine. And, and so people like wouldn't public support wouldn't be adequate. What do you think Elon Musk's going on SNL for? Hey, Same fucking deal. Hey, right? it's it. Thank you. you thank just, you. I mean, we're just da- dancing around it and it's got the best example right there. I'm just Look saying. at me. I'm a regular funny guy. I'm on SNL, you know, just because the government's propping up my company and I'm trying to go to Mars. Like, did I'm you, a cool uh, guy. Did you watch the promos, by the way? Uh, no, I, I didn't. Total dog shit. Yeah. Here's the problem. Oh. <laughs> Here's the problem. Because he's wooden and unfunny. Me, well, that's it. But... <laughs> Here's the problem. He would not take his time. And I'm specifically doing this now to be meta. But he was too nervous and too eager to read his lines. It's like, yeah, we get it. You can read. I okay? would love but it. But the thing with comedy is timing. And you need to take your time. You need to make it digestible. <laughs> I was going to say, I was just going to make die hard. You have to make it just like McLean and in, in Die Hard. Oh, damn, it was a callback and I missed it. Just had to shit on one more time before he actually takes the stage tomorrow and and, and crashes the oh my the God. modern economy, the, <laughs> the wor- you know, world's seventh largest uh, company. Okay, right. So that okay, there you go. He crashes and burns. Right. He totally stutters over his words. Just completely flops, fails, hates it. Everyone's like, "This is the guy we've given all this money hey, to." Dude, I'm serious. Monday though. morning, the stock just dives, just fucking dives. Well, here's the thing. I mean, there's been like a bubble forming in Dogecoin due to the fact that everyone's speculating oh, that yeah. he's going to make some fucking joke in a skit, which he may, whatever. Yeah, he for sure is. But and we have actually talked previously about, oh, you know, the market's crazy. You know, might be 
two months, too much uh, enthusiasm. Maybe it's a bubble, whatever. How fun, and people have also like uh, floated all these theories, like, oh, when Coinboy, Coinbase goes public, which mm-hmm. is like the Bitcoin trading yeah, thing, yeah. Or, or when Robinhood, the company, when that goes public, that's going to be like the popping of the bubble, right? That's going to be too much. How great would it be if it was Elon when he was on SNL? And that just freaking pops it, and everyone just sells, and everyone's like, well, "This is the guy." It's we're Dogecoin. Dogecoin. Co- Dogecoin is the thing that yeah. like everyone had funneled into, and then is going to get out of. Oh my god, that would be tremendous. Yeah. I, I would love it. We'll I see. would love it. We'll I would see. love it. If he, if this ends up being a horrible gaff for him, that just destroys him, and it was totally his own doing, and it was completely accidental. You know what I mean? He just well, look. He <sighs> has a brand of being cool, right? And if he's not cool on what's the coolest fucking show and opportunity in the world, then that's a major like brand problem for him i think it would be cool if like the cast kind of embarrasses him you know by the way he was trying to wear a leather jacket too trying to be cool i that bandana dude that fucking bandana that looks like and it's okay so so this guy grew up in the 80s so that bandana is a statement in multiple ways because it's not a mask it's a bandana right it's like it's like he's saying something by even fucking doing that he's like i'm not gonna wear a mask i'm an outlaw yeah i'm an outlaw i'm I'm just gonna wear a bandana and i'm just a cool guy so you can't make me take it off even though it's not really like protective wear in any way but you know it's a hell of an era though when uh you have to tap into the cult cult of personality i want to both what look at our notes we both look at our notes at the same yeah we should because we're getting close i heard the church bells so yeah but i think we're, we're okay i, I think still we think got, we got a, like 20 minutes solid 20 yeah, yeah. did you well, feel got, 20 minutes dude? i have 15 does it feel like it do, well, do you think we have 20 more minutes is that what you feel i think now it's less is that possible did okay. we start it okay you said 520 yeah, about that. It's wanna... been we've been flying, man. That category game took. You're right. It's yeah, it took a yeah, minute. About fifteen. That's why I'm. That's why I'm looking down here. I want to make sure we hit hit all the bases. Okay. Do you have more on the list? Let me go with. I did my list last week, so I really want to go for your list. So, okay. And then... Okay. I I got one more that I definitely want to get to. Cool. How do you feel about consuming content from vice signalers? Vice, oh man, okay. So I so yes, okay. So this is somebody something. Uh, time ironic. out, time out. Do my vice the channel? No, no, no. Like vice is like smoking and drinking, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah, the thing I, I brought this up before okay. in certain elements. Yeah, no, but yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I think it's a it's a troubling thing that I think everyone needs to figure out for themselves. Um, uh, there are uh, there was a comedian who I felt was helping me enable my behavior because I saw him do the things that he did. And I was like, well, I'm not as bad as this guy. And it was kind of this like a perpetual enabling of something, yeah. you know? And I was like, ah. and I kind of, st- I, I still enjoy him, but I don't watch him the way I used to watch him. You know, there's a lot of comedians that like do bad shit and it makes you feel like it's okay for you to do that bad shit. But in the reality, it's just like, no man, that's not normal. That's not normal behavior. That is not well, normal. Um, here's the thing, even if you can delineate in the moment, it definitely has some sort of influence on you, right? It's it's an affirmation. You it's, listen to that podcast every week, or you listen to him multiple times a week, and it, like you said, media manipulation, media, um, you know, people. brainwashing. You know, you start to brainwash yourself when you you see everyone everyone around you, meaning the content that you're watching, is 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 pushing you in that direction. You know, you keep looking at some destination on the map, whether or not it's someone else's prepackaged, pre-produced destination, yeah. you might in some way subconsciously drive toward that destination. Why did we start one of drinking when we first started the podcast? Because right. Rogan drinks on the podcast, right? Not I, I mean, won't say Rogan drinks on the but you know what I'm saying? Like there there was it was a sense of like cool bar feel. Or more I think just more um Less specific, it's a hang, yeah, quote unquote. Sure. It feels like a hangout, right? Yeah. And you know what do guys do when they get together and hang? They like drink together, or whatever. Drink, we smoke, and you know, hang out, right? But it also does tie into the the indie feel, the countercultural elements of podcasting. Something that's not produced. Something I was talking about earlier, having affinity for. So there's there's sense behind it, and I've I've enjoyed it a lot too. But I, I have a similar feeling that it can be uh, it can be sort of insidious. Yeah, how, I, how that chips away at your perfect word. Morality foundation over yeah. time. It just, w- w- like you said, regardless of how you feel. Irregardless. Irregardless of how you feel, the more you do it, the more you do a thing, the more it's going to it's gonna happen. Yeah, you said it, the destination. You keep staring at that thing. You know what I mean? Like, eventually. And then you're like, ah. And then, too, you're not that person. You see somebody doing a thing, you start modeling your behavior after that person. It's like you're not that person. So you can't. You know, Don Draper, right? Everybody remember Mad Men. You talk about Mad Men. You know, when that show was going on, everybody wanted to be Don Draper. And he was a, a fucking ch- philanderer, hard drinking, smoking liar, 
right? And everybody wanted to be like that guy. John Hamm actually, like, he said how difficult it was like coming out of that role that he had to go to rehab that was, he was having issues being a womanizer how how about that the one who ends up doing it the most on screen i mean maybe i'm sure he watches his own work more than anything actually if we were constantly like drinking on this podcast you know i'm, I'm the one editing these things. yes right. so i would be just be staring at my own face drinking it's like hey look it's an advertisement for drinking that you made yourself basically Absolutely. over and over and over again it's an advertisement for drinking and yeah. that's you know what i mean or, or whatever it is that you're doing on the so pod. so tell me how do you how do you how do you account for this because i know it's we're i think we're still in that that era of the pendulum where i think we're open to these sort of voices to ones that are a little bit more riffraffy or that have more like fringed or vice signaling elements because we're searching out that media and we're like looking at stuff on YouTube and some of these wild, wild west type platforms where there aren't the same gatekeepers available. Authenticity, man. But, it's authentic. You could you could be real. You know, hey, we're just smoking, we're drinking. You're not going to see that on NBC. You know, we're, you know what I mean? There's some realness of people being real. Real people drink, real people smoke. When they hang out, they do this shit, right? It's definitely this, the, the authenticity signal. You know what I mean? That's what, like we're but real. But what about your media diet? What do about you, it? I'm sorry. Do you, how do you account? Is, is it natural for you to just listen to the 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 jerk off or douchebag type personalities a little, or the scumbag, scumbag, yeah. not jerk off, douchebag, like the scumbaggy type behavior? Is you, do you just kind of know when you've had enough of that, or do you feel you have to tell yourself like, don't do it daily? Like I can't listen to negative shit every day, or yeah, just, I, I feel uh, like I have and flow. There'll be times where I search it out and I'm looking for it specifically, and like there's other times. There's other times where I'm like, not, I don't want that at all. Right. And I'll be going through, you, you know, I just go through phases and cycles. I think though, uh, for some people though, oh man, I, I don't want to toot my horn. I think some people don't even are, aren't conscious of it. Right. So like I've thought about it, I'm conscious of it. So when I feel like I'm watching things, you know, I think some people just, they start liking what they like. And so they just keep it going and they might not think about it like anyone too who, deeply. Any, I mean, back 20 years ago, I could have been watching the Sopranos and then you watch a bunch of episodes in a row and you're like, what's this motherfucking goddamn? Oh, you know, man. all of a sudden yeah. you find yourself using this language that's much harsher, obviously, absolutely, much cruder. and you don't know why. And you're like, why? So it's this like, has oh. been around for a long time. Yeah. You're right. It's yeah. it's it's been on the the radar, but we have a lot of access to it now. I mean, we used to have shit cleaned up for us on TV, and obviously, the American culture has been dumbed down and sexualized, and uh, yeah, absolutely, sexualized. vice signaled to a whole new level now. And I and I'm trying to I'm trying to come to terms. I don't have an answer for this. Yeah. I like the you know. You can have the iPhone software technology tell you how, many, how much time you've been on Instagram, but it doesn't tell you how much time you spent looking at people who are fucking jerks on Instagram. Yeah, yeah the content, the shitty content. Watching or terrible influences. Sports. Sorry, right. Barstool Sports. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like just some alpha bros or, or you know, sh not positive. Be, you know, be the change you want to uh, look at the internet no, say content. What was, what was the quote? <laughs> <laughs> be the change in the world. No, it was uh, be the kind of person you want to meet, right? Oh uh, yeah, exactly. I okay. was trying to see if you were gonna combine. Yeah, yeah. I was going. I was kind of the change combining. you wish to see in the world, or and then be the... be be the change in the world that you want to see. <laughs> but like, also be the person, the good person. But you know, look at the internet content that you want to be be like. Right? Like, do you want positivity in your life, or do you want to look I at? Do. You know, like, and I want intention in my life. That's yeah. one of the reasons I, I wanted to start having some sort of outline i think for what to talk about right 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 i think intention is okay i think it's okay uh like you said dogmatic uh like st rigid rigidity you know not so good you know we don't need that we don't need to be i'm not not, not that i'm dictating we don't need but you know it's like there is a level of like committing to like i want to talk about this and there's specific things i want to say and that's still you can still be authentic you can still be the same person and have like valid things to talk about you know. Let me ask you about a specific personality, Josh Potter. <laughs> he used to have a show. Well, he originally he still has a show, Josh Potter Show. It's like a YouTube show, and I, you know I've seen a, I've seen a bunch of his, especially early episodes. I yeah. watched him at the beginning. I love watching like a new show like start yes. and get formed. Same. I watched like the first twenty episodes. Yeah, he has excellent timing yeah. in terms of how slowly he delivers information. I like the fact that he like kind of cues a soundboard type thing. Um, but I love how some, uh, fearless his humor is. That's he's he's authentically yeah, he, fearless. He, there you go. So he he goes deep, right? He'll say crazy things, mm -hmm. but the, it ends up getting into vice signaling territory because yes. he will say anything. And I was gonna say his show was called Roach Motel. Yeah, it was like part of like a brand thing where yeah. he was like a a scummy type guy. 
Well, the the and your mom's house when he'd used to do clips or come on, it would have a woman crying. Would be his intro. It'd be like, <laughs> yeah. And like then he would talk about like murdering women or, or or you know what I mean. Like he definitely had a brand, right? His brand is like kind of the scummy, like you know. Well, I I kind of stopped watching it. Sure. Because I I I felt like it wasn't doing me a real service to right. be taken in this kind of plaque on a weekly basis. So like, that being said, I think my my like mind space is going to start dwindling more and more for those things that could kind of crash the plane on me right over time i stopped watching as much your mom's house and you know um two bears one cave a lot of those shows that i w- felt like i'm glad i brought this up then. no this no no yeah this is ex- i i like over the last like <laughs> six months eight months i i don't watch them as much as i used to you know there i wouldn't miss an episode of any of that you know but it got to a point where i thought about all these things i'm like man this is really like this is perpetuating some of my bad thinking processes and and like you know like i'm laughing at things that like i don't know if i really want to laugh at them you know blah 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 and they're still funny but it's just the 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 constant drive was changing my thinking process it maybe it's just advice signaling is an acknowledgement of like the young shadow self the carl you know yeah the 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 sense that you're giving relief to people that that is there you're acknowledging it and maybe you're making jokes about it sure. right in some way i've always it, liked it could comedic- be sh- comedy that pushes the boundaries though you know i've always liked george carlin we've talked about that and, have and, like in laughter gives you relief yeah and things that like again pushing boundaries that you can't talk about anyone else like you're talking about you know you can't the videos and the clips and like the jokes that they make you can't make those anywhere else than uh, a podcast that is uh, has no producer, you know, there's no overarching person over it. The jokes and, and, and the, the right. political the, incorrectness. The, the investor doesn't have a say, the investor's there husband, was, the investment investor's husband's personal trainer, you know, everyone ends up having to say like, oh, I saw the show, and then they chirp in. There's a great, chirp, chirp, um, chirp, chirp, chirp. McDonald's sponsored them um, in like 2017, gave them like three point some odd million dollars. They built a new studio. They were going to be sponsored by McDonald's. Uh, whole joke is though it seems like McDonald's didn't really know what they were investing in so they listened to like one episode and then pulled the money so like they they gave them the money the whole thing the studio was colored in McDonald's colors like gold and red there's like a couple of older episodes I think it's in the 400s and like then McDonald's like they did one with like a cool guy who was really into butt plugs and like he was just like demonstrating like sex toys on camera and so they were you know, it was cool guy Terry and blah, blah, blah. And they were laughing about him. This sounds like classic Howard Stern, by the way. I, like they're just ripping Howard they Stern. They are. And that's what, when I was, uh, when I was communicating it to my older, I shouldn't say older mother. She'd hate that if she heard this. But my mother, I was trying to. At this to point, com- she's not listening, I guarantee Yeah, you. she probably won't. She says, I'll listen. She never fucking listens. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but she, I was trying to compare. I was like, yeah, it's like a, it's like a new age Howard Stern. I was like, it's like a new age Howard yeah. Stern. You know, they have, because that's what Howard used to do. would have like naked ladies and like weird sex shit, talk about farting and pissing. And then they'd have all these celebrities come on and tell like crazy stories. You know, that's not your mom's house has pe- celebrities telling crazy stories, but it's along the same veins of like getting really like gross and disgusting and like all those parts that like nobody, you know, nobody doesn't really touch, but they touch it and they do it in a, like a very like goofy way. Right. Funny, you had some some similar themes crop up recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's vi- totally funny. Vice signaling media diet stuff. Again, yeah. I I still I have room in my life for it. It's not that I want to go back to everything being sterile, one thousand percent bland. I don't want that. That's not my. But everything in desire. moderation. Everything's in moderation, man. Like yeah. I don't need a steady diet of vice signaling. You know, on the flip side, shit. do you have? like really upbeat or like positive type shows or people you listen to? No, I mean, no, I don't. There's that, nothing that's that, that's the next yeah. kink in this, right? Is like building the infrastructure for like the good ideas to get to your brain and the positive affirmations to occur. So it's funny because I don't feel like the opposite of that is positivity. So for me, the opposite of that is to like learn something, right? So I will listen to like a show about like science or I'll listen to like a political show, right? Something like, I, so if well, that's the thing filling you, you my f- brain with bullshit versus filling my brain with something else. But you feel like it needs to be like nonfiction, like you need to learn something. It needs to be productive mm-hmm. in a way that I think when it's like, oh, if I'm just trying to have fun or I'm just trying to enjoy myself, the vice signaling fits in better. Yeah, it does. Because it's more of like a fuck-off type thing. That's exactly what it is. It's a fuck-off thing. This is like popcorn. It's popcorn podcast. But what about getting like positive, good vibes in fuck-off situations? That's, right, yeah. That's something. I, there are things like that, though. Like there, there are people who are like, you know, 
ragey, but there it's from a place of positivity. If I call this episode positive, good vibes in a fuck off situation, <laughs> does that, does that like, uh, well, that's a mouthful. How does, this is like driving me crazy. Can you swear words on titles on YouTube? Mm, just do it with like some like asterisk hashtag no, but would they, at sign. Would they pull it down? How does that even work? You probably just wouldn't be broadcast. It probably wouldn't go anywhere, right? Or they would, would it, read it and they'd be like, okay, well, we're not going to put this in the algorithm. I wonder if it's like built into the software like, sorry, your title must not use the word fuck. Fuck shit piss. I bet that they're, I don't know. Well, you don't have to know that. I was just, I was just, I was just thinking, aside. I was like, what would be, well, I'm, well, it wasn't like, do I have to know? It's like, I wonder what was best for YouTube to let people have that in there or take it out. But because I automate, think man, the automated police officer, hey, look, we want, we want to let you say fuck in your title, okay? But the algo said that you can't say it, okay? Algo. I'm sorry. The algo. I think we're there, by the way. I don't, Are know. We? I don't know. Yeah. The sun's also getting in my, in my face. All right. I'm just going to read the list. Um, oh, dude, I have my hair sticking up. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, not too bad. Not too bad. In the sun, it's casting a sweet shadow. We got to tell each other that shit. Okay, so I had um. Well, I was, that, well, that happened that with you that episode. Uh, and I thought my hair looked great. I, and I'm, I'm all like, confident. dude, I thought we were be, we were beyond telling each other on air. You know, you have to tell. And I had a peacock thing. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna, I just want to go through my list really quick. Please, okay. yeah, yeah. So the first thing I had was Indian vaccines. The sun went away. Went away. At so the we're, perfect we're moment. Starlink, 100 days. Uh, Trump's FBI clone for himself. For him alone is what I said. Uh, SNL, which is, you know, Elon Musk. Financial markets, which we talked mm, about. We yeah. talked about that stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, this is when I talk about. This is close to my heart, but we'll skip it. Black Superman. Um, oh, cool. Okay. Uh, DC versus Marvel, which leads into DC versus Marvel versus representation, which I was going to talk about that. Um, Mars. Oh, did you see that new clip? Really quick. Uh, this crazy viral video going around of this dude in South Africa that looks like John Wick. So in South no. Africa, there's a lot of... Um, like uh crime just a lot of crime and they're um thanks elon yeah he's trying to just leave it behind and move on there's like a bulletproof car with i think it's cell phones and they're like delivering cell phones and they're basically being robbed and this guy is like driving and it's like you see like the bullets get like hit the glass and it's like out of a freaking action movie and this guy is cra- like just doing it doing it and this guy next to him's got like an AK and then this guy it like ends with him getting out with the AK and like this huge story and this guy he's like a special forces guy who's like trained and like all this stuff and then I guess today you saw like the dash cam of like what he was driving which adds even more intensity because he's trying to like pit cars out he like runs some people down so when you first see it it's just him driving and it's just crazy and he just does things but then you see what he's doing and it's like this mind-blowing thing it's gone super viral it's like everywhere right now i didn't know if you'd seen it i, I had not no yeah. it's really so, cool are they gonna piece it together and, and yeah it's like done he's already like movie? he yeah i bet though i bet that they'll do something like that but he's gotten like a bunch of accolades for it now and like, like the company's like he's our most valuable employee what car was he driving is it gonna be like uh it was like a Brinks truck. Ocean spray with the skateboarder, <laughs> dog face guy. It was like a Brinks truck. And that was the last one. And then Chappelle on Rogan. And then, yeah, Chappelle on Rogan. Dave Chappelle which, on yeah, Rogan. Which it's, I will break my Rogan on Spotify and, and, and watch that tonight. I did, I did today for the yeah. first time in a while. I got on there and uh, dodged a couple ads, left, right, left, right, and then eventually got in there. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll cover that more for, for next time. Speak, speaking of uh, vice signaling media. Yeah. He was smoking a stogie, Rogan. Oh, big old fucking stogie. Of course, of course. You know what? And then yeah, that brings me back just really quick because I've been watching a lot of old clips. I've been following this uh, Groucho Marx. I've been loving Groucho Marx. YouTube's got a bunch of them. I think I talked about it like the last couple. Dude's always got a stogie, and in all these old shows, they're always advertising like cigarettes and like just just and that's it wasn't even vice signaling. That was just culture, and everyone's smoking and they're lighting up everywhere and everyone's smoking. So it's like talk about vice you, signaling. It's time out though. You're always choosing what's on the lens. In fact, I would say that we care less about what's on lens now. And mm. that's maybe one of the reasons for the proliferation of vice signaling. Like back then, it's like, especially if you saw a cigarette on camera back then, it's like that camera, number one, cost someone's house, right? Yeah. Like you couldn't even get cheap cameras. Right. So if you were choosing to put that on, it was a very intentional thing. Yeah. And you, but, but it was also But so they were reflecting real life. Permeated right? culture. Because smoking yeah. was everywhere. It wasn't, I guess it wasn't as big of a vice then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, definitely not at all. All right, damn, this was great. Yeah, all right. This is solid. Broomstick Paradise. I don't know, man. I was trying to fit it in. I couldn't fit it in. That's just the, that's it. that was the, that's what he fucking gave me. Broomstick Paradise. That's what you're supposed to say. Yeah, Broomstick, broomstick Paradise. Paradise. So in my head, I had you this whole thing. You could have said it. In my head, why? Well, I see. I, I I was gonna set it up. I was gonna talk about Chernobyl, right? So in Chernobyl, what happened was like, you know, I was gonna try to talk about radiation and getting radiation because, um, one of the crazy side effects from Chernobyl happening was there was a broomstick factory that was irradiated. So they couldn't figure out how all these people in Russia 
were getting sick with cancer and they checked the broomsticks and the broomsticks were all irradiated. And so that was how they got people sick because it was in a broomstick factory. So it's going to comment how America is like a broomstick paradise because all of our broomsticks are not irradiated. You know, we're a broomstick paradise. It didn't broomstick get there though. Broomstick paradise would also work like people aren't going back to work. Mm -hmm. So right now there's just brooms everywhere broomstick paradise. that aren't being used and it's... Or, and then you said something about straw man, and I was going to be like, this oh, is... broomstick paradise, straw man. I just couldn't do it, and I, I wasn't really trying very hard, so oh. maybe next time. Straw man? Straw man. I you, brought up straw Yeah, man. you did, and then I was going to jump piggyback on it, and somehow I added like a broomstick paradise for a straw man. Blows my mind. This is, yeah, the, what's becoming almost the, a, a weekly game of trying to... It's a running joke, on, yeah. On it's, podcast. it's a running joke. Broomstick Paradise is pretty tough. I'm gl I'm glad though that it's it's getting tougher because we we can't just make this easy forever. You know? Yeah, I didn't I didn't want it easy, but like I didn't feel natural, and I and then at the, and then midway through I'm like I'm just gonna fucking say it at the end because I just enjoy what we're talking about because we were talking with intention and we were trying to make it die hard, adjustable. Ah, fuck. <laughs> next time, next time. <laughs> bye next everyone. Time.